My video for February the 15th, 2018 is entitled, Definite, <laughs> yeah, Deficit Spending is a Lie. There is no debt. I listened to a speech by Senator Rand Paul in which he talked about the huge U.S. deficit. He's an intelligent man, yet like so many, he accepts as fact that the United States, purposefully not capitalized, is somehow indebted to the international bankers, also known as House of Rothschild, who have been running their scam for the last few centuries at least. Folks, what will it take for us to wake up? Perhaps even more importantly, when will a supposedly loving God stop allowing demons to control this or any other world? Sorry, but I do not buy into the claim that we have to learn hard lessons. God is the one who needs to, to learn those lessons. And when will he, she, and when he, she finally gets it, we can all be liberated from the scam, the deception in which we have been imprisoned for so long. If I were omnipotent and omniscient, I would simply give these charlatans an ultimatum, repent or be permanently erased from existence. They serve no useful purpose whatsoever. As I see it, it's high time that we be set free to learn how to do what we have been programmed to forget, to actually love one another. That requires being honest with ourselves and each other. Can we do that? Yes, it's a crying shame to me that the God that I have placed my hopes and dreams and my whole life upon, the foundation that God is love, I've been doing that since I was a little kid. And as I've said in other videos, my parents gave me to God before I was even born, before I was even conceived. And I've always, from earliest recollection, I've always loved God, or at least thought that I loved God because I believed that God was love. That's what I was taught. That's what I was taught. And yes, I went through a lot of deception, and I didn't even realize it was deception for a long time. It took me, it took me some time to actually get it, to actually wake up. So I understand how difficult it is for Rand Paul and for a lot of people, for probably all of us. It's very difficult for us to get it that we can accomplish much more by actually caring about one another, by actually seeing the other as a part of ourself, not separate, but connected. That's what Anastasia taught. That's what I believe the early uh, people in India and, and you know, they people have been, trying to get that through to us for a long time. I attended a lecture last, last night on Buddhism, and it was very interesting. Buddhists don't have a concept of there being a God that's separate from us. We are just beings, men, women. We are human, and we are here. And the karma that supposedly exists is also a deception. I mean, the sin is a deception. And who was it that led the deception? Supposedly, some dark fallen angels. Supposedly. Now, is that true? I don't know if it's true, but I can see the world that I live in, and I can see the, in, the bondage that exists among my brothers and sisters that I personally have experienced of having things taken from us that are rightfully ours with no remedy to move into 
a way that we can reclaim our sovereignty and reclaim our natural rights and reclaim our abilities that have been squandered and lost because of the deception of religion, the deception of the financial system, the deception of the political system, in other words, the deception of everything that makes up our present evil world. And evil, again, is just simply live backwards. And love is about evolving. Why do we need to evolve? You know, Anastasia's grandfather, when he was ready to die, just went and died. And they would just sit in their, their uh, tombs, if you will, and just pass on and get ready to come back another time to have another experience. Why does it have to be the way that it seems to have been for millennia, actually? Just, not just the centuries that the Rothschilds have had some say in domination. They are criminals, folks. When are you going to understand it? That the people that operate the financial system are operating a criminal enterprise that enslaves humanity. It does not set us free. It could. It could if the people that ran it were running it for the purpose of liberation, for the purpose of freedom, for the purpose of loving kindness and, and lifting humanity up instead of pushing it down. We don't need to reduce the world's population because if we were able to come into our inherent powers and abilities, the latent, the latent powers of our soul, so to speak, if we were able to reactivate these, we could literally go anywhere. We would, we would not be limited as we are limited now. The limitations are lies. They are not real, but they seem real because it is what we experience. And experience is real when we're experiencing it, but we need to transcend that. We need to be able to go beyond the limitations, beyond the lies, beyond the control grid that we are entrapped within and this earth that we seem to be entrapped upon. But it, again, it's all a fiction. We have to get to telling the truth. And how can we do that? When ideologies compete with each other and none of them tell the whole truth. They might tell part of it because all religions teach love. All of them do. But they're all interwoven with lies. All of them, all of them. That's a hard thing for us to get, that we have been lied to lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And most of us forget. And yet there have been people in our modern world of the 20th, 21st century that have died and come back and even as children have realized that they were somebody else in the previous lifetime because we are on this merry-go-round of reincarnation. And I have told the story before how that little, little boy born to, in a Christian home that didn't believe in reincarnation talked about this town that he used to live in in England where he was killed. And he finally his parents took him there and he knew his way around the town, and he even knew a couple of the people that were still alive and that remembered him from the previous life. Folks, we've got to be elevated in our consciousness, in our thinking, and open our hearts to the ability to love. We have that ability. It's inherent within us, but we need to use it, and we need to reclaim it for ourselves. And I ask the creator to help us do that. That's all I'm going to say in this video. And I, as always, I do appreciate you listening and namaste.